Hello and welcome to another episode of Communication How. In the last episode, we dealt with the semiotic tradition of communication theory. In today's episode, we shall take a look at yet another tradition. Today, we shall deal with the phenomenological tradition in communication theory. Now, what is part of this tradition? What does this tradition basically focus on? All that and more, we will come to know in today's series. Well, theories in the phenomenological tradition assume that people actively interpret their experiences and come to understand the world by personal experience with it. Now, this tradition concentrates on the conscious experience of the person. And an experience could be as simple as watching the stars in the night sky. I'm sure that many of us have done this. And we see that through this, we are able to interpret our experience and understanding by our personal experience. So it is said that people are actively interpreting their experience and thus are understanding the world through their personal experience. Now, I'm sure that most of us, at least once in our lifetime, must have been lying on our back and observing the night sky. Sometimes, during childhood, nearly everyone begins to ask cosmological questions as they gaze into the sky and contemplate the enormity of the universe. Light, speed, time, matter, energy, movement and distance come to be known to us by contemplating the meaning of it all. We expand our horizon by also using telescopes, looking at pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope and comparing astronomical distances and times with those closer to home. Now, in other words, we see that when we have a limited experience, we go to the next step. We try to build on it and we advance in it. And in this way, we gain more and more information. Now, the process of knowing through direct experience is part of the province of phenomenology, which is the second tradition in the communication discipline. And here we see that knowledge takes place through direct experience. Now, let us take a look at some of the key ideas of the phenomenological tradition. And for this, first and foremost, we need to analyze the term phenomena. Now, phenomena refers to the appearance of an object, event, or condition that is perceived. Then, we also need to analyze the term phenomenology. And phenomenology is the way in which human beings come to understand the world through direct experience. You come to know something by consciously examining it and testing your feelings and perceptions about it. Now, it is said that there was a person by the name of Morris Ponty, a theorist in this tradition, and he wrote, All my knowledge of the world even my scientific knowledge is gained from my particular point of view or from some experience of the world. And in this way, if we analyze our lives, we will see that most of the knowledge that we gain is the one that is from experience and from a particular point of view. And thus we can say that phenomenology makes actual lived experience the basic data of reality. All you can know is what you experience. And phenomenology means letting things become manifest as what they are. For example, if you want to know about love, you would not go and ask a psychologist. You would not go to a lawyer to find out what is love. In other words, what you would have to do is tap into your own experience of love and try to understand what love means. 
and thus we see that in phenomenology it refers to letting things manifest as what they are trying to see things and experiencing things as they are now we need to also analyze and familiar familiarize ourselves with the three basic principles of phenomenology now there is a person by the name of stanley dets and he summarizes the three basic principles of phenomenology the first principle is knowledge found directly in conscious experience that is we come to know the world as we engage in it in whatever we do in whatever part we take in we tend to understand that that becomes part of our conscious experience and through that experience we are then able to gain some knowledge about that particular area and in this way we see that it helps us to also build our knowledge next the second principle is the meaning of a thing consists of the potential of that thing in one's life now for example how you relate to an object determines its meaning for you for example if someone told you that there is a particular course which will make you a great speaker and a great orator i'm sure most of you will jump in and take that course because after all we all want to be good communicators we also want to be persons who can communicate well and we want to be effective speakers so without giving it a second thought all of us would jump in for that course now why do we do that because we see the potential in that course and what is the potential the potential is that extra knowledge that extra skill set that would make us famous or that would make us achieve what we want to achieve and thus we see in this way that sometimes in life we also tend to look at the future part of it we look at the capacity and the potential of a particular thing in one's life and in this way we see that if we know that something has the potential something has the capacity that particular object or thing will have more meaning for us and we come to the third principle which says that language is the vehicle of meaning we experience the world through language and language is used to define and express that world in which we live in we know keys because of language we know the term key the meaning of the key because of the things that we associate with the key for example lock open metal weight and so on so we see that these words which are part of the language are associated with the word key and therefore when we think of a door or we think of a lock the next thing that comes to our mind is the key and in this way we see how language becomes a vehicle of meaning it carries the meaning for that particular word in itself now we see that in the phenomenological tradition interpretation is central to the phenomenological thought now this is also sometimes known by the german term verstehen which means understanding and we see that interpretation is the active process of assigning meaning to an experience now in the semiotic tradition interpretation is considered to be separate from reality but in phenomenology interpretation literally forms what is real for the person you cannot separate reality from interpretation we see that interpretation is an active process of the mind a creative act of clarifying personal experience and thus we see that interpretation involves going back and forth and experiencing an event or situation and assigning meaning to it that is moving from the specific 
to the general and back to the specific again. And this is what we call as the hermeneutic circle. Now, in this way, we see that when it comes to making decisions, our decisions are also influenced by something of the past. Our decisions are also influenced by something that has capacity or potential. For example, all of us know that if boiling water or boiling tea is poured into a cup, we need to wait for some time before we can drink it. Because I'm sure at one point of time, we would have directly drunk it and we would have burnt our tongues. So this experience tells us that the next time boiling water or boiling tea is poured into a cup, we need to wait for some time. And therefore, when you see hot tea, you go back to that experience and that experience tells you that you need to wait before drinking it. Similarly, as I gave the example of the language class, if you know that that particular course is going to give you the potential to become a great speaker, you will take it. And therefore, we see that in our lives, we are constantly going back and forth. We are constantly going to the past and also thinking about the future before making any decision or before communicating anything that we want to communicate. And thus we see that in the phenomenological tradition, we construct an experience or an interpretation of an event or experience. And then we test that interpretation by looking closely at the specifics of the event once again. And thus we see that it is a continual process of refining our meanings. For example, we see a woman who had has a particularly rocky relationship with her father. Now that experience formed the basis of her understanding of relationships with men. Now this interpretation will probably undergo continual shifting throughout life as she continues to go back and forth between experiencing relationships and interpreting them in the light of new experiences. And thus we see that if we take a look at the salient features of the phenomenological tradition, first and foremost, we see that while semiotics tends to focus on the sign and its functions, phenomenology looks much at the individual as the key component in the communication process. And in this way, we see that phenomenology is the way in which human beings come to understand the world through direct experience. Now, much of the phenomenological tradition deals with how interpretation of phenomena occurs. Now, in the semiotic tradition, interpretation is considered to be separate from reality. But in phenomenology, interpretation literally forms what is real for the person. And thus, we see that most phenomenologists today subscribe to the idea that experience is subjective and not objective. That means I may have a particular experience about one thing, whereas you may have completely an opposite experience of the same thing. Let's take the example of the dog. For example, if I'm an animal lover, for me, thinking of a dog would be petting the dog or playing with it. But suppose if you have had a negative encounter with a dog, you will immediately be fear struck at the sight of a dog because you will remember your previous experience of probably being chased by a dog or of probably having been bitten by a dog. And this will form your kind of reaction to that particular stimulus. Now, most phenomenologists believe that subjectivity is an important kind of knowledge in its own right. And things in the world don't exist independently of the knower. Rather, people, give meaning to things through personal relationships with those things. And thus we can say that any 
phenomenological experience is necessarily a subjective one. What is real is what is available to us packed in a language. So in this way, we see that the phenomenological tradition basically deals with our experience, how we gain our experience, how we gain knowledge through our conscious experience. And in this way, we see, we interpret this knowledge and thus we are able to base our judgments on that. So this was all for the phenomenological tradition. We shall meet again in the next episode where we shall deal with the cybernetic tradition. So till then, thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.